You don't see as much of Gloria Steinem as we used to in the media and around the country, and I, I, I think I hear some of you saying that's good, but, but I think others are, are pleased with what she has done with the women's movement in this country. Some people still call it a radical movement. Uh, one thing about Gloria Steinem you may be interested to hear, she's a very, very petite, slight woman, much smaller than you would imagine if you haven't seen her in person. Anyway, I bring that up because she admits that her looks have had a lot to do with her success as a leader in the women's movement. And by the way, I wondered if she thought it was fair to call the women's movement radical. I don't think that we're radicals. I think the system yeah. is radically wrong, you know. But yeah. nonetheless, Jerry Falwell and, and uh, uh, much of Reagan's cabinet and Reagan himself and uh, all these folks, you know, seem to be quite upset by it. Have you ever met Reagan? No. Why don't you try and arrange a meeting with him? It would be interesting to, to see. He is very popular with the American people. No, he's not. I mean, he, the only no, reason he got... He listen, is. he was elected by... 26 percent of the American electorate and it was the oldest and the richest and the whitest and the most male electorate in the history of the country and most of them were just voting for change for the sake of change. I mean I think that, that we have low standards for him because we know he's not very bright so we sort of forgive him you know for, <laughs> for now, passing up. You people know. are throwing things at the set out there. Uh, do you really think George McGovern has a, has a uh, well I think we all accept the fact that he doesn't have a chance but he's going to make an important contribution to the dialogue but maybe you think he does have a chance to become president. What, what do you think? Well, I don't know what has gone into his thinking and, and declaring. Uh, Did you I have don't any see, role in it? In no, not at all. No, I, I, no, I have not at all. I, I, and I haven't even spoken to him. Yeah. I have a lot of respect for him because he was the first member of the Senate to stand up and, and say that Vietnam was a mistake. And he was the first uh, major politician to talk about white racism instead of just talking about the Negro problem and yeah. so on. He has a sense of history, and he's an ethical man. So I, I assume that he believes that he can contribute to the dialogue. But un, but he doesn't seem to have a campaign. He doesn't have a campaign manager in financing. So I'm assuming also that he's he doesn't see himself as a practical nominee, but more as a force to keep the issues in view. Right. I'm a, I'm a, it's remarkable to me that your uh, collection of writing starts with the one that I think made you prominent. I was a Playboy bunny. How many years ago was that? Twenty. You posed as a bunny, or you were a bunny, right? You... Well, I, uh, under another name, I right. went to write an expose of being a bunny. Uh, and here, 20 years later, the Playboy bunnies are still hopping around the landscape at the various clubs. Hugh Hefner is still uh, uh, making a lot of money. All those kinds of things are still very successful and popular, aren't they? Well, yes and no. I mean, the Playboy clubs are closing. The customers are getting older and older. <laughs> where do the where do the young men go? The to? the uh, you know the readers of Playboy apparently are getting older and older. Yeah. Uh, and in any case, even if that weren't true, I personally would not want to go down in history as Hugh Hefner. That's interesting. I wonder if he would want to go down in history as Gloria Steinem. Well, I suspect that he wants to be thought of as an admirable person because he's making all kinds of efforts to buy. Uh, Civil Liberties Awards and to paint himself as a champion of the First Amendment and so on. So I think he may be having second thoughts himself. Any ambitions to become president? No, I, I don't. But I must say that, that, that Reagan and Nixon and company have removed any sense of humility we might have felt about that office. Yes. That they can do it, we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> now you got those people all angry again. All right. <laughs> Let me show the book again. Gloria Steinem, Outrageous Acts and Everyday Rebellions. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you.